Hi there, I am Dmitry, artist from Moscow, and this is the next video about oils. It is dedicated to paints, pigments and mixtures. The most common question I have been asked after the release of previous video was about paints. I should warn you, you will not find a miniature painting here, but this information also can be helpful for traditional genres, if you would like to paint canvases or whatever with oils. Miniatures as well, of course. The most basic information about oil paints can be found in previous movie. I just remind you that for miniature painting it is highly recommended to use artist grade paints. Also I divide the palette into the left part with opaque paints and the right part with translucent paints. On the first layer I work mostly only with opaque paints to build up main volumes and on the second layer I use both opaque and transparent paints to paint details and push the contrast. Last time I told you that it is enough to have about 12-16 tubes to mix almost any color and paint with them whatever you would like to. So now you can see the most basic palette, where I use 13 tubes of paint. Pay attention how the right opaque side correlates to the left transparent side. Of course you can have more paints and probably you would if you start painting with oils. I usually use more paints. They can make your life easier. But on the other hand, the less pigments you use, the more harmonized colors you will get in your work. Also pay attention that this time I wrote all the pigments. Sometimes different manufacturers can use different pigments for the same paint, so maybe it would be easier to find the right paint relying more on pigment marker. Let's start with the black color. There are several opaque paints you can choose from, but I think that I would recommend you to use a lamp black pigment black 7 as a primary color for your palette. I also add some Schmincke mineral black pigment black 28 that has some bluish tint so you can compare them. And some ivory black pigment black 9 that otherwise has some brown tint. We can see that the lamp black is the most neutral of them. There are more blacks can be found, like wine black and some others, but let's stop on the lamp black. The next color is cobalt blue. In fact, it is very expensive pigment, but I mostly use imitation. This one is from Schmincke. If you would like to have true cobalt blue, then Old Holland manufacturer has it, and Musini range from Schmincke has it as well. But in comparison, the difference is not so critical. What are the alternatives? Almost known. This is the most basic blue color you can find. Not very warm or cold. And it performs great in mixtures. Sometimes I also use indigo. I like this color, but it is more cold and performs much worse in mixtures. You can get a color that is close to indigo by mixing cobalt blue, black and a bit of yellow. The next one is Burnt Umber, Pigment Brown 7, a classical earth pigment. Pay attention that it should be opaque. Some manufacturers have semi-opaque Burnt Umber. It is quite neutral brown, not the orange or red. You can see it in comparison with Mars Brown Deep, Pigment Brown 6. The next one is also a classical color, yellow ochlite, pigment yellow 43. The most manufacturers have it as a semi-opaque paint and don't be afraid, it performs just like this opaque. I never had any problems with it if the paint is from artist grade and not studio. Now we move to cadmium red light, pigment red 108. This is an expensive pigment, but one of the most neutral vivid red, and it works great in mixtures. As an alternative, you can have vermilion red instead, but it's a bit more orange, and because of this it performs a bit worse in mixtures. But anyway, vermilion red is a good option to save some funds. The next pigment is also an expensive one, cadmium yellow light, pigment yellow 35. As a replacement, you can use pigment yellow 3 or pigment yellow 74. In Old Holland range they are called Scheveningen Yellow, or sometimes you can find cadmium lemon that costs less than cadmium yellow light. 
The difference is not so critical in color, but they can be a bit more transparent than cadmium yellow light. Now we move to the right side and start with ultramarine blue, pigment blue 29. A very classical pigment, not so vivid and has some violet tint. I like to use it on the second layer for shadows or to make neutral transparent mixtures with it. For example, with transparent brown to paint metals. It's common cheap pigment and there is no need to find any other options. The next one is a vivid transparent blue. I think for these purposes we choose classical Prussian blue, pigment blue 27, that has some greenish tint and much colder than ultramarine. Now as an alternative you can choose pigment blue 15, that different manufacturers call differently, usually phthalo blue or sometimes laser blue or blue lake. Now some transparent vivid brown. I use schminke laser oxide brown with Pigment Red 101 marking. Old Holland has the same paint and it is called Transparent Oxide Red Lake. There are many other options in fact. For example, Mars Brown Deep Transparent. Also we need some transparent yellow. I prefer Indian yellow, though different manufacturers use different pigments. Old Holland has, well, you see it, Indian yellow. Masterclass has Indian yellow with another pigment markers. Or you can even use pigment yellow 42 transparent. Masterclass has it as a mass yellow transparent. Well, it's easy to get lost here. Just try to find any transparent yellow or yellow brown. As I know, the classical Indian yellow was made from the urine of Indian cows who just ate mangoes. And I doubt that this paint is being done this way nowadays. About transparent reds. The first one is alizarin crimson. Old Holland has a marking of pigment violet 19, pigment red 177, pigment brown 23. Well, you see it. Sometimes it can have a marking of two pigments, pigment violet 18, pigment red 177. I use this paint from several manufacturers, so the pigment doesn't matter much. There is almost no difference. And the last one is magenta paint. I was thinking if I should add it to the basic palette or leave just 12 colors. I have decided that probably you should have it to get almost any color. Otherwise it would be very hard to get away with pink color. This is Lazur Magenta Translucent from Schminke Pigment Red 122. Old Holland has the same pigment called Old Holland Magenta. We proceed to some mixtures. First you can notice that I don't use any green here. It's very simple to get a good basic green if you mix cobalt blue and cadmium yellow. If you need a dull green color, mix cobalt blue and yellow ochre. Then you can mix in other paints into those basic mixtures to tune your green as you would like to. Now look how those pigments perform well if you would like to mix turquoise. The same paints here, cobalt blue and cadmium yellow, the difference is in proportion. For basic violet we mix cadmium red and cobalt blue. Basic orange color can be mixed with cadmium yellow and cadmium red. Because of the chosen pigments all mixtures are clear and vivid. We can do just the same with transparent pigments. Mix transparent blue with transparent yellow to get transparent green and transparent turquoise. Magenta and ultramarine will give you a nice violet transparent color in the mixture.
You can mix Indian yellow and alizarin crimson to get some orange tint. So what is about pink color? Mix cadmium red with white. You can see that you get a dull mixture. Then on the second layer after it dries you can tint it with transparent magenta. The next thing I would like to show to you, the difference between artistic grade of paint and so-called studio oil paint that is much cheaper and usually used for painting studies or painting in impasto technique. For miniature painting try to get artistic grade of oil paints. The same burnt amber pigment and you can see that the artistic grade paint is loaded with pigment much more. Now let's try out some more complicated mixtures. You see that I try to use only vivid colors on my palette. Because it is very easy to desaturate the color and vice versa it is very hard to make it more vivid. So we will need kind of gray neutral mixture to desaturate our colors. I make such mixture starting with burnt amber and cobalt blue. They are quite opposite colors on Eaton's color wheel that many artists use, so they will create a muddy almost black mixture. Move it to the white adding titanium white. Don't forget when you mix colors always make transitions so you will have all the tonal varieties between colors. Now if you would like to, you can make this mixture a bit warmer by adding yellow ochre. For beginners usually the most complicated colors to mix from the basic palette are skin tone colors. I will show you two ways of how to do it. These are just the basic skin tone mixtures. Colors of the skin depend on rays, reflected light, light conditions and other colors used in composition. In fact they can be mixed with any colors depending on the light. But now let's try to pretend that there are some neutral light conditions. The first mixture is for vivid skin tone colors. It can be used to depict some sunny weather or just stylized or fantasy characters. For the light we will use a mixture of yellow, ochre, red and white, mixing a variety of skin tones. A bit of cadmium yellow also can be used in this mixture. For shadows we will use burnt amber and cadmium red mostly. Cold shadow can be achieved by mixing in a bit of cobalt blue. Now take a look how those mixed colors can be easily used to paint a face, for example.
The next mixture for the skin tones is a bit different. It is not so vivid and somehow less stylized and looks more realistically. If you paint military models where less saturated colors are usually used, or let's say you would like to paint some character from your imagination on canvas, then probably try to start with this mixture. For shadows I mix burn umber with grayish yellow mixture. For the light I move this mixture to gray, even less saturated, trying to avoid red color. And for the highlights I mix a mixture of bluish white. Just a bit of cadmium red was used in the bottom of this mixture. Now you can look at the quick example of how to use those colors on another face. So these are just the basic mixtures to start from. Don't hesitate to try out other mixtures. The color itself is not so important, the most important are tonal values. The next mixture is to paint some metal, let's say iron. We start from the neutral mixture of burnt umber and cobalt blue. I would say using even more burnt umber, so the metal would look like being worn and not polished. Then I use bluish mixture for the lights and highlights. Some yellowish mixture can be used for the reflected light. But of course it depends what object the metal reflects. As well as the light and highlights in fact. So this is just a basic mixture, something to start from.
Then let's try to make a mixture for more polished metal. We need to have some image of surrounding ambient in our imagination to paint polished metal. Let's do it simple way, outdoor summer daytime. The polished metal will have less local color and more reflected colors. The mixture is quite the same as previous one, just less gray colors so other colors will look more vivid. I also used a bit of black here to push the contrast. Now let's paint some gold. I start with a mixture of burnt amber and cadmium yellow, adding a bit of cadmium red. For the deepest shadows I use a mixture of black, yellow cadmium and a bit of red as well. Just without burnt amber. And then for the light move your mixture to white and cadmium yellow. For the reflected light you can use pure cadmium yellow or an orange mixture of cadmium yellow and cadmium red. The next mixture that can cause difficulties if you are a beginner is a black mixture. As well as other colors, it depends on the surrounding colors. 
but first let's try to mix some neutral very dark black mixture and paint some material with it. I mix the black paint with cobalt blue for half tones and move it to white for the highlights. For the shadows I mix the black paint with cadmium red. It still looks black but creates a contrast with bluish lights. Now let's try out some warm black mixture. Well, to be honest, it's a bit greenish, but still looks much warmer than previous one. The material we'll try to paint will look more matte, I think. Okay, let's mix cadmium yellow with black. And then for the light, we just use our neutral gray that we have mixed before. We can add a bit of blue into the highlight. And the last mixture is some basic mixture for white material. Also it depends on the light conditions, but let's mix something to start from. Mix titanium white with some burnt umber and cobalt blue. Add some yellow ochre for the mid-tones. And maybe just a drop of blue into pure titanium white for the highlights. Just check your tonal values. If it is white, then it should not have shadows too much dark. Ok, now you see that you can paint everything you would like to with just 7 opaque colors. To achieve any color and to extend your tonal hue and saturation ranges, you should use also transparent paints that I didn't use in these mixtures, but I use them on the second layer when the first one is dried. 
you can find some examples of how to do it in my previous video dedicated to painting Warhammer 28mm scale model. If you would like to buy more paints to make a 17 colors palette, I would recommend you these four colors. It is a warm gray or you can buy some neutral gray, any of them. I just don't recommend you to use cold gray. You will always need to desaturate your mixtures, so it's very good to have some gray nearby. The next one is chrome green or some similar color that you can use as a primary green, so you don't need to mix basic green. Also Schmincke has a transparent Fumato gray paint. Sometimes I use it in transparent mixtures and it works just the same way as opaque gray. It desaturates transparent colors I use. And the last one is dioxazine move cheap and vivid violet opaque color. Then when you have those 17, you can try out anything you would like to. I hope that this video was useful and it will help you to start painting with oils, as well as the previous one dedicated to miniature painting. I use this approach to my palette on my miniatures and canvases as well. I would like to say many thanks to people who supported me and donated after the previous movie. You have made this video possible. It is free without ads and it took much effort to make it. If you would like to support me, the link is below. Also, if you have some questions about painting miniatures with oils, I would recommend you to watch the previous movie and read comments that were left. I guess I have answered about 50 or more questions there. Okay, stay safe and bye-bye.